YouTube. It's Valerie, Stitching in the Barn. It is Friday, May the 3rd, uh, 2019, and it is day three of Stitch Mania. And I keep having to remind myself that not everybody understands what Stitch Mania is. It's just very briefly, it's a fun um, sort of a game that people thought up um, in 2015 where their original idea was that you had 15 different starts for the year 2015 in the month of May, just to sort of kickstart your stitching, you know. And uh, people have taken the idea and run with it. You can do 15 days as the original plan was. You can do 2000, you can do 19 for 2019 new starts. You could do all whips. You could do five. You could do three. You could do one. You could do 105. You can do whatever you want. But um, the way I'm doing it is I'm trying to do a new start a day, which is 31 starts for the month of May. I may substitute out some of the ones that I had originally shown you that I was going to do. And then a, a kind viewer suggested, she actually said that my face lit up when I talked about certain ones and not others, and that maybe I should try changing the fabric that they were going to be stitched on, and that might make me happier. So I think that's an excellent idea. So there's a couple that were on sort of bright white Ada that just didn't appeal because of that. And I I could either put them on linen, which I might do. I also have some um, higher count Ada that I experimented with when I was first learning to tea coffee dye. So I might do them on the ones I'm thinking of, the Betsy Ross and Independence Hall. Uh, patterns that my husband had given me, which I showed last time. But anyway, so I'm off to a pretty good start. Um, I was not sure if this was going to suit my personality or not. And then I remembered, you know, my whole life I have just loved doing craft projects. And so for my birthday and Christmas and any little occasion, my mom would always get me either um, craft supplies or little kits and things. And um, so many of the times, I can't even tell you, so many of them remained unopened because I had this fear of starting them, of doing it wrong, I think, or, you know, the picture on the box appealed to me so much and I was terrified that it wasn't going to come out looking just like that and I'd mess it up somehow. And, you know, it's funny because my husband's whole approach is so different from mine and he was like, you know, he grew up in Africa and he said, I would have killed to have some little arts and craft supplies. You know, whatever his mom could get their hands on or when they'd travel back to Britain, she'd buy stuff and hide it away and, and give it out for birthday and Christmas and stuff because they couldn't get anything like that there. And they would just make things out of whatever, which is great. But um, he was helping me clean out some old boxes or something and he, we came across some of these and he's like, I can't believe you never did these. So if I can find a picture, because I have two of them. There was one, I had this obsession with Native American culture, which I still am very interested in. But um, I had this one little doll that I wanted to make. And I just remember looking so lovingly at the box and just dreaming of holding this little doll. And I never made her. It's terrible. She was made out of felt. It was one of those Hallmark kits. Hallmark, I don't know if they still do, but they used to put out craft kits for children. And this was a little Native American doll with her braids of yarn and her little felt, brown felt outfit. I think you could, you embroidered the face for sure and you could either embellish it with some little beads or something, I forget what, but I never did it. And then I had this other one, it wasn't Hallmark, but it was a big doll. Um, I think she was in like a pink, uh, pink satin dress and she had this big stripy lollipop and you had to make the lollipop as well. And she fascinated me. And again, with the yellow yarn hair and stuff. And I, I did, I used to open the kits and look at all the things and then I carefully put them back again. Um, and with her, I think at one point I did get brave and embroider her eyes on the little face panel that they gave you. Um, and then I put it away, that's as much as I did. Oh, poor little me being so um, insecure or whatever, afraid to make a mistake. That's just not the way to live, so anyway.
I thought about this mania business and how in some ways it's totally insane and in other ways it's really good for me because it's forcing me I have a lot of patterns that I've looked at and I thought I want to do that I want to do that and for some reason I just put them back and I don't do them and here they are all kitted up and it's a new day and I spin my wheel and sometimes I listen to it and obey it and other times I do not which is fine um, but it's really been fun like so far it's been fun and I'm not worried about having all these whips because I just pick up one I stitch on it for a little bit and then I swap and you, know. you do feel like you get into one and you're enjoying it and you want to keep going that is one thing I will say like it's a shame the next day when you wake up you're not immediately picking that one up and carrying on but quite a few of mine are small, so I could conceivably finish them quite easily. So the thought of all these whips does not presently terrify me. We'll see, it's, you know, it's only day three. <laughs> but, um, so what shall I show you first? I will let my computer fire up because I did pick a winner for the B pattern and I have it on my computer. So as soon as that comes on, I'll tell you who won that. But, um, I'll show you what I've been working on for Mania, I guess. Um, day one for Mania, I did heartstring samplery, baby it's cold outside, which is wonderful, I love this. The only thing is that um, the barn calls for, I think it's pomegranate, pomegranate. And my particular pomegranate, excuse me, typing my password, um, is very pink like it, it has a tiniest bit of variegation but not ever do I achieve this color and I'll show you you see how pink it is this was done with a different color I was trying to find something else that I thought would would work for that and I think I came up with barn door uh, classic color works barn door but even this is quite pinky like I'm thinking maybe I should go with like used brick or something I wanted it to keep the same feeling um, of the pattern which does have a sort of pinkish overtone but I didn't want it to be all pink and no nothing else but pink so I don't know what I'm gonna do I guess I will um, I guess I'll have to just keep going I'll pick some I'm gonna pick when I get back to this, I will pick some of this part out and try and make at least, oops, try and make at least this section darker and then this part can be lighter and then a darker section again because you want the, the shading so the, the building appears. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. It's like talking to somebody who's on their phone all the time, isn't it? Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, so that was uh, Stitch Mania day number one. Stitch Mania day number two was Fairy Little Gnome. And he's been a lot of fun. He's on dark blue Ada, which I thought would be a disaster, but because it's Ada, it's quite easy to see the holes, as you can see. And it's stiff, so you can just hang on to him and, and go. And the funny thing is, this is a Russian pattern. So uh, the instructions all come in Russian, and then there's also an English sort of translation. But it's interesting because the way, like the sti the things are not that difficult. It's cross stitch and half stitch and a little tent stitch and French knots and things, and some outlining. But the way they are telling you to do it, the way they mark it off is very different. So that took a bit of getting used to. Like it says AB135 or something. I'm like, what? You know, and then you look and oh, they're showing you diagram A shows you what color. Diagram B tells you what stitch. Three, five have the little drawings that illustrate what you're meant to be doing. Anyway, once you figure it out, it's not so bad. So here he is. Do, do, do. He's cute. I can't wait to put in the um, strands for his beard. And some of them are two strands and some of them are one. So there's a big confusion about that. <laughs> but I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. Number three, today I'm doing Knee High by Hands On Design, which I'm very excited to start. I have a teeny weeny little start on that, which I'll show you. There it is, the fence. Um, 
again, you know, a pleasure to stitch. And that's Chocolate Milk Linen by Fabrics by Stephanie. You know, it's really a pleasure to stitch on, and I would love to keep going with that. But <sighs> this weekend we've got lots of company coming. We have friends coming from Vancouver, and we have my son coming back from California. And then we're all going to rush up to his graduation the next weekend from college. And there's all kinds of stuff going on, so... Um, if I get a few little stitches in each one, I think I'll be quite happy. This is the Dying to Stitch club piece, um, Grace on Thee, and I've nearly completed the other topiary, and I've put in place most of the stars. They get different fillings inside, different colors. Um, but at least I have them placed. And then if I add the writing, it'll go across here. So not much left to do on that one. And then I did put in a few stitches on my um, Hawkorn Hollow Farms because I'm feeling bad that for the first time I've fallen behind. This is supposed to be the April block. Um, so as you can see, I'm filling in um, her dress. I changed her dress um, because it was supposed to be all white. And I thought, oh, I didn't want to do that. And um, it's supposed to be Grammy Jane, but I made it Grammy Jean because that was my mum's name. And it was supposed to say apple butter, and I made it apple pies because my mother loved to bake apple pies. So I'm filling it in with this because these teal colors were her favorite colors. And I made a little pie for the top there. And once I've done the blue, I'm going to have some little white lines coming up, just outlining to be like the steam rising from the pie, which I think will be fun. And there's flowers that are supposed to go around here and here and I have to finish the grass and I have to finish the box, the outline. So I don't know what to do and this was supposed to be done in April. So that's a little, a little bit distressing, but not worrying about it. Just, it is what it is. <sighs> okay. The winner of the B pattern, which I had in my hot little hands moments ago, Hang on. I'm telling you. Here we go. The Blue Flower Quilting Bee. And the winner of the pattern is Golden Hair Stitcher Susan, who loved the uh, colors and the quilt motif on the bee. So Golden Hair Stitcher Susan, if you could please contact me at the address that I will put below, my email address, Within the week, I will get this pattern out to you, and congratulations. And thank you, everybody who entered. It was a thrill to read all your comments. I wish I had uh, 200 and some patterns to give away, because that's how many people commented. But um, next time, hopefully, you know, there'll be other giveaways, and maybe you can win the next pattern. So, um, Susan, get in touch with me. And I do have another pattern I want to give away. This is another pattern that was very kindly donated by Lila. Um, Carolyn DeLong said Lila. So I'm not sure if it's Lila or Lila. I just assumed it was Lila. But anyway, Lila Studio. Um, this is her pattern, and she gave it to me to use as a giveaway. So lucky you guys get to have this beautiful pattern called The Bee Comes. So I'm really on a bee kick at the moment. And it says, the flower doesn't dream of the bee. It blooms and the bee comes. So, um, let's think of a question. Okay, here's the question. If you would like to enter to win this pattern, tell me in your comments if you like to eat honeycomb or not. Um, you can say, oh, I would just like to eat honey, uh, the liquid honey, or you like to eat the honeycomb. I'm just curious how many people actually eat honeycomb. Um, I like to a little bit. Uh, I think it might be a British thing and having lived over there and living with my grandmother growing up. Um, I will put a little tiny bit of honeycomb on a piece of toast or something, and I don't mind that. Um, but for the most part, I'm happy to get it from a jar. <laughs> so if you're interested in winning this pattern, tell me if you like to eat honeycomb. Do not say giveaway. Do not say contest. Do not say free. Um, it would be nice if you liked the video or subscribed to my videos, that would be nice. It's not necessary. Um, and then next Friday, I will announce 
the winner of this pattern. So it's open for a week and good luck to all of you. Ah, so I think that's everything. I've shown you my three starts for Mania and um, I announced the winner and I showed you the other little patterns I've been working on. And other than that, it's just work, work, work here, getting ready for company and being excited. I have been planting some more plants. I went to my favorite little um, greenhouse place and again, they still didn't have everything out. So I did get most of what I wanted. Um, there's a couple little pots that I would still like to fill, but um, there's plenty of time I can do that. But for the most part, I've got my things in the ground. It's going to rain a lot this week, so that's probably a good thing. It'll help them all get established and settled, um, you know, without too much baking sun on them. Although it's meant it's kind of a little chilly and dreary. In fact, in this t-shirt, I am way too chilly right now. I'm going to go upstairs and put on a nice warm sweater. Uh, and then, of course, when I start making beds and cleaning, I will get hot again. But <laughs> that's just the way it is. So, um, I hope everybody's been well. I hope you're all having fun. I hope if you're participating in Stitch Mania, you are enjoying the experience. I hope you're doing it your way and, and um, just having a laugh with it. And until next time, um, all good things to everybody. Bye. <music>